Hello everyone and welcome once again to another commentary video. This time we are going to review again this new map uh, called Verdunois. But uh, there is a catch to it, uh, you will probably know because of the thumbnail. It's a storm mirror and storm mirrors are not something that are very common. But on this map, Verdunois, I think they are more common than normally, than usual. The reason for not being common is uh, Storm is a tier 1 CO on Fog, a tier 0 on Standard, and Standard is always banned because you can zone out the enemy and being agnosious. But on, on Fog is tier 1, but not always. He is sometimes banned if he breaks the capture phase or the map. <coughs> His gimmick, uh, his day-to-day -day is basically he ignores uh, the terrain costs on ground units and that's very, very, very strong. Any movement boost on day-to-day -day abilities is huge. As you can see, he's the only CO on Advanced Wars via web that has that. And he has also 20% defense. So if you stay on a city, on a property, capturing with uh, infantry or whatever, Getting 2 hit KO, even if you attack with vehicles, is very very hard unless you have a huge firepower. But this is a storm mirror, so we are gonna see very few 2 hit KOs, uh, probably uh, not even 3 hit KOs. Uh, the calculations are gonna be very wacky. I did a meme long back, a time ago, about how storm mirrors are. They basically deal no damage to each other because they also have minus 10% firepower. And <clears throat> you have the Meteor, which is very strong in the sense, in a vacuum. Uh, and th this can be an interesting map uh, on how the Meteor is used, the superpower, the CO power. It can be very devastating, but you can, <clears throat> how you call it, uh, lure it away, misdirect it, even with weakened units, because a storm is based on Advanced Wars 2, not in Advanced Wars Dual Strike, so his missile, quote unquote, works differently. Uh, I will maybe probably do a video about uh, how it works differently and how missiles work in general specifically and what are the differences between them. If you are interested, let me know in the comments. But <clears throat> anyways, let's talk about the players. The players are here Quackerdak, we already know him, I have covered recently a lot of his matches, he is uh, fairly strong, and on paper it seems like he's a strong lad, uh, the Ch Chinese enemy player, this is, uh, it's called Long, people call him Long, um, so I'm gonna call him Long, uh, he's a, a coming back a legend, to say something like that, he's a uh, very praised on the Global League uh, channel thread and I do believe uh, hearing from him by Lightning Strike uh, talking very well about him so I, I'm very interesting to see because barely 1300s is not his real uh, strength uh, probably maybe he's a bit trusty we don't know but probably mm, on his normal um, best stance he's quite top 10 maybe i don't know i'm not sure i don't know him but that's what i'm being told anyways guys let's just stray jump to the match and let's see how it goes remember that a storm capture phase can be uh, much better than other co's just uh, because you can ignore these uh, rivers with your infantry like if they were planes i don't know if it's gonna make a difference because uh, you can uh, get into that city with this infantry in two days anyways so that won't be the case but if there is mountains which is not the map uh, mountains are also very um, very good for a storm because they their infantry basically ignore it but as you can see recons are look at this movement the problem with storm recons against a storm is that they are gonna deal uh, lat la lahable. I I am not able to say laws. Uh, able, 
less able uh, amounts of damage and as you can see uh, both players are just aiming to to see the others opening and even though um, Recon's uh, deal so little damage against a storm infantry capturing that they still can do annoying stuff like this one as you can see these uh, infantry is uh, well it's likely for Quackardak this is not gonna delete any of uh, his captures the reason for that is that uh, there is no infantry that wanted to cap this city the very next turn so that's completely fine and now he has the tank to drive this recon away the thing is that uh, this recon won't die from a two hit maybe it won't even die to two hit KO tank so that I don't, I'm not gonna put every single calculation because yeah, it could be too too much. I, I wish there was a calculator on the let me put the, the camera well um, on the on this replayer. But also remember that since a storm uh, ignores terrain, uh, he's gonna be able uh, when playing against uh, someone else to overstand a little more than it should be normal for us other CEO because uh, his ranges are much uh, larger so you have already two extra movement on your vehicles and that's humongous uh, basically it means that the map is two spaces smaller for you so you your range for the two turn um, base range is two tiles more uh, more bigger, more larger, and I is is very is very very good. If it look, even the infantry is boosted, and the, the the problem with a storm mirrors is that what is your game plan? Because <laughs> how are you gonna dislodge this this tower if you look? Three of damage. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to comment this because of the, <laughs> of the damage rolls. So if I look, three of damage. Um, Quackerdak can simply keep capping. It, not even, uh, how you call it, a join cap, and he will get the capture. It's so funny. And as you can see, yeah. What are you going first strike from a property this is this is a very good engagement but because he's a storm it, it looks like something that it was not that important so i don't know what are going to be the game plan uh, the win, uh, in order to achieve a win condition but um, it might be very slow but i don't know i wonder because normally uh, what uh, storm game plan is it's normally he is very aggressive with recons and then he uh, swifts into a very slow uh, methodic push with uh, indirects because you have incredible walls and your indirects are better in the sense that <clears throat> they they move as much as other tanks in the sense that since they ignore forests or rockets or missiles, uh, ignore whatever planes there are, uh, they are basically almost move as much as tanks. So you can, and you don't need as much, uh, you, you can even wall with recons. And look, uh, yeah, first, is, look, what what is this? And it can, it won't die, pro I mean, it, it will die because there is a third tank, but against these two tanks, I think it's a roll to die. So, it, it's, it will survive many, many hits, but now comes another one. And to be honest, I think I agree with attacking the, the weaker one. The reason for that is, if you attack the other one, you will probably get back one HP of damage. And look, two hit KO, five of damage oh, oh shit. 
and the capture phase uh, looks uh, pretty even right now but quaker duck is about to get five properties next turn and long is only getting uh, three because this has been interrupted and he needs to to join cap or or do something about it uh, he won't get it if uh, he doesn't do something about it but let's see because this recon can now die it's on range of this 8 hp uh, tank which i think it's enough to kill it maybe no i think it will probably need um, an infantry uh, lag roll but the thing is defense also reduce the lag damage so you cannot even rely on that because you normally do from 0 to 9 <coughs> with a full hp you need uh, again zero defense uh, damage of extra lag on top of your base damage and <coughs> against a storm you deal uh, zero to seven so it's already i mean it's not a huge difference but it add ups a lot 20 percent defense is is a lot and look this should be almost a one shot like a normal co good almost one shot this infantry to one hp but no four hp and look two of them it's, it's <laughs> oh my god and if you are able somehow you are not going to be able but if you are able somehow to kill the units that do hit ko your infantry capping you can just simply keep capping and you will get it into turns look five hp it's because a storm is facing a storm if a storm was facing something like hawk or bomb ball um, he will probably get um, much more damage but he also would have deal more damage and yeah he keeps capping and can cover this uh, capture with more infantry he has a he can do a triple uh, hit here but it won't be a kill Completely sure it won't be and against a normal CO it wouldn't be it neither but he only gets a two hit KO which I think is it's fine since you drop it to 4 HP and that's enough to interrupt a cap very reliably and yeah you can uh, try to kill this infantry but you will need two units to do that and not even a full HP infantry can do that so you will uh, be exposing yourself against a tank and infantry. And here we see use full tank uh, battleship. And as you can see now, Quaker Duck is shifting to the indirect uh, gameplay. Um, and I think I agree more with that approach now. Um, also there is an anti-air expecting some copters the problem with the storm copters is that they don't they move as much as other copters they uh, attack as three copters and uh, they don't even uh, the, the defense doesn't matter because they don't stack defense with the rain so maybe they don't get one shot uh, by a normal anti-air but an anti-air with some boost will definitely uh, kill them so so yeah and i think a normal anti-air uh, to kill a storm uh, copter is a roll so not even uh, not even that although a storm of course won't be able to kill a, a copter with his anti-air but I still will be able to to check it uh, looks like Long is uh, gonna be able to capture the, um, the comp tower. I don't see how you are wall breaking this. But maybe he is not even trying to wall break it. Yeah, he's just going for the captures. Because in a storm mirror, the, because of the way of defense skills, whoever gets the high ground, I think, has the upper hand. And the reason for that is. Um, you can only get one or two hit KOs, uh, one or two hits, not uh, hit KOs, and you are not going to be able to kill that unit, and you are not going to be able to steal the high ground for from a, the enemy storm, as a storm. So I think it's very important to hold the high ground as a storm. And we see a copter coming. The problem is that uh, 
he didn't uh, see the antier, but I mean, next turn he might uh, uh, scout the antier, and he has used to uh, bring this antier here, uh, this copter here. So it's gonna be all right. Uh, a copter is uh, still gonna be uh, very useful to deal with tanks. And yeah, we see a lot of engagements, but only uh, one kill. Look, six of damage. Normally, uh, tanks attacking recons on light terrain like roads on planes is almost always a one shot or one or two HP. But in this case, it's still a four HP recon. And I think. Quackerdak is doubling too much in the sense that he is investing too much here without getting nothing of... Uh, he, he should have um, invested much less and try to defend just these properties and bring more tanks in this area because he's now losing on both fronts and the reason for that is because he's trying to win in both fronts uh, by dividing his uh, forces more or less equally. It's not 50-50, uh, but he's 40-60 dividing his forces. Uh, like there is two tank here, there is four vehicles here, and that's something you normally don't want to do on fog. Look, a, a storm tank on road still needs to get <coughs> three hit KO. And wow, that that that's very very bad for Quackerdak because you just lost two tanks and now you have only one tank left against five enemy tanks which are all of them uh, almost full HP and if you are losing a front with a storm you have to use simply to run away and if your units are recon it will be able to do that <coughs> excuse me with a, with a couch couch or how do you say when you <coughs> Koch, you pronounce it that way. Anyways, I'm not liking the Quaker Duck situation anymore. I didn't like it last turn, but now I completely. <coughs> oh my god, I completely dislike it uh, because now you see the the weaknesses of dividing your forces equally. I think it's not the first time that I see Quaker Duck doing this mistake. I mean, is. I'm not saying it's, it's very hard to punish this mistake if you don't notice, but yeah, look, if you put a recon on a city, it's going to be very hard to dislodge it. And now you put your artillery in, in vision of this recon, I think I don't agree with that, I think you should have I mean, there is no way you can advance a lot without uh, getting rebuilt anyways. So I guess it's fine to put it on a city. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, I didn't think about this recon vision range. So if this recon was dead, you could have uh, br brought that inf uh, artillery here. And that locks this city from being used. If you put it on the road, you are just giving uh, a very nice hit to the recon. But still, one tank, uh, if you bring enough uh, wall for the infantry, is gonna be enough. And there is a lot of copters now. Very interesting. An anti-air on light terrain, even if you are stormed against a storm, is not gonna be able to hold very easily. Almost to hit KO. You have to be careful with your anti-air. If you put your anti-air on high ground, you are going to be able to to use it uh, even if it gets hit uh, because uh, you have such a high base damage. But one thing I find very interesting with the storm is if you manage to get uh, Two com towers, you basically become normal CEO, but with huge defense, and that's something that might happen. It's not something uh, you have to 
to be super worried about. Look, even leaving this uh, open to to be an attack, but you are not in vision range. At least uh, you don't see any recons. And even if you get hit, you have a lot of forces to counter that tank attacking this, which is not gonna deal that much of a damage. Probably five, six, maybe four just. And oh. Pakardak, I think it's getting overly uh, aggressive in this area. He's running out of units, and even though he has the vehicle advantage, he has no counter if uh, something like a medium tank a copter comes. And he's also, yeah, he has only two infantry left. So at the end of the day, he. Uh, Lang uh, can use uh, his infantry to interrupt these caps, which are not even need to be interrupted now. And he can use uh, wait one more turn in order to, to counter this push. So I think uh, Long should have play uh, defensive here, protecting the comp tower with the artillery and these properties, and playing a bit more aggressive here. But anyways, not even that. Oh my God! Look at this. Because they are slightly weakened, they are not able to 3 hit KO a 9 HP tank on Asylum. Oh my god. And you are able to hit the artillery from the city. And uh, as you can see, it's only 4 HP of damage, but it's uh, still a very nice hit because you take control over the high ground. You force that artillery to run away. This artillery needs to run away because you won't be able to kill these units. So uh, this artillery will be exposed next turn if it shoots. So it needs to basically uh, put something between what is attacking and and them themselves. And one tank is he look only one damage with the recon on the artillery. It's ridiculous but now this tank has to run away this artillery is completely exposed these captures yeah they didn't get too much attack but you are not getting them and next turn he's gonna be able to attack them with at least two infantries uh, maybe a recon from here another recon from here so it's completely fine not uh, interrupting the caps if you don't need to but we see a meteor strike now um, by uh, by Quackardak, but uh, Long is now is not stupid, and he knows he needed to stay back with this tank, used uh, in with enough uh, to to misdirect it, the meteor. So now the front lines won't get hit. Yes, this is this is annoying to happen to you, but uh, what I think. Um, is the best because this uh, all these units are gonna get repaired by the tank, but your front lines won't get uh, uh, destroyed because when you play as um, Rachel, for example, also you want the, the missile to hit the front lines because then you want to kill that those units that you want to finish them up because one HP, two HP, three HP, etc. units are still gonna be able to do some stuff, and you are losing barely no tempo as as long here and even if you do uh, you are uh, how you call it you you are going to be able to use your your own meteor also this tank is not moving into the hq because it probably tried to go into the forest and got trapped and if you get trapped it doesn't get registered on the logs and i don't know if these uh, four units are gonna be enough to misdirect uh, the missile from this area because uh, a storm um, meteor uh, counts uh, 1 HP units as if they were full HP but uh, Bombol and Rachel doesn't do that and yeah it fell here so this is already I think uh, a game changing meteor like uh, Quackardak was slightly behind uh, because of the situation of splitting even but now this is completely crashing because you are losing here and you are also now losing here so yeah um, I don't like this 
at all. I don't know where this recon went, probably it got trapped somewhere, that's why it doesn't, it doesn't move. But remember that now uh, Long is facing 30% defense, so <laughs> he's, he's facing Kabe defense. He's facing normal CO uh, firepower, but uh, still. He's not able to 3 hit KO and infantry uh, with uh, 3 infantries, and it was at HHP. Look, this artillery being so tanky. It's bangers. And 2 double recon by Long on this stage of the map. Uh, I mean, you have the vehicle superiority, so I don't hate it. But I would have, uh, I mean, yeah, he didn't have any funds to go tank infantry thing. No, yeah, he, he did. So I could have probably go tank infantry, but I guess double recon, you can do some stuff against artillery. But Quackerdag uh, resigned after this devastating meteor strike. So it was quite a fairly uh, weak match. As soon as the powers came into into play, uh, the match was over. I think the biggest mistake was putting this tank uh, near these uh, gathered units. As you can see here, you have to bring this tank um, away. Also, you have to stay with this uh, copter uh, on the base or with this tank on the base. Um, maybe split a bit more uh, this block of units. They might be, might get uh, striped, but you are facing a storm as a storm. So if if you put it like this, they are gonna get hit by a eight HP meteor, and then they are gonna die. So yeah, um, I think it, it was a big mistake to you. You have to put this artillery maybe on the city, on the city. This tank uh, misdirecting the the meteor, and this tank also away. And that could have been at least the saving for the meteor fall. Anyways, in order to do that, you have to play a little bit with the move planner uh, to see where it falls. So whenever you are facing a CO with missiles, you have to, to use the move planner at least the turns where he might drop it. But anyways, guys, uh, this was a quick commentary. Let me know again, I said on the introduction, if you want to to me to to tell to do a more an educational video about how to actually uh, use um, missiles or how to play against them uh, I can invite uh, another strong top player and talk with them on how to do it and give tips but anyways guys uh, thank you for, for watching and bye bye